Hi there, and welcome to episode 5 of the 2013 film blog. I was going to say good evening there, but obviously, given what we're reviewing tonight, I think pretty much every other review of this film has started with good evening, so I'm thinking I'm not going to do that. So, apologies in advance, this blog was supposed to be discussing Zero Dark Thirty, but unfortunately I couldn't get in because I had to work. So um, instead we went to see the northeast premiere of Hitchcock instead with them. Sir Anthony Hopkins, Helen Mirren, Scarlett Johansson and various others. I mean, it's sort of pretty much on a hiding to nothing is Hitchcock. Because given when it's been released, it's pretty much guaranteed itself now, given that we had, less than a month ago, we had Toby Jones's version, when he played Hitchcock in The Girl. So we've now got Sir Anthony Hopkins' version of Hitchcock. Uh, obviously The Girl was ostensibly the tale of Hitchcock and Tippi Hedren in The Birds. This is the tale of Hitchcock and Janet Lee in Psycho. So I sort of went in and I was expecting pretty much to get what we got with the birds, only jazzier, better effects, bigger, and about Psycho. The problem is that's not really what you get. Um, because I was expecting to come out of the film and sort of say, OK, here we have the girl, here we have Hitchcock, and these two can be really easily compared which one is better. But you can't do that. See, the point about the girl and how that was done was that Toby Jones' version of Hitchcock, you know, it, it's nothing, nothing worse or better than we get from Anthony Hopkins, but the girl, it had its idea. The point was that the girl was only the story of Tippi Hedren and Alfred Hitchcock. That entire film was all about the relationship between those two and how Hitchcock's obsession with this girl was played out through this film. The film itself is, it could be anything. It just happens to be the birds. It happens to be this film. What you get with Hitchcock, it doesn't seem to quite know what it wants to be. Because obviously it's an adaptation of a book about the making of Psycho. And when we first come into the film, that's pretty much what we're looking at here. I mean, the film opens with this scene on a farm with these two men digging, and one of the men makes a dig at the other man's mother. And next thing you know, he's swinging a shawl around and he's killed him. And the camera pans across to Alfred Hitchcock, who does his good evening thing in the style of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And we're sort of, it's explained that this is a murder, and this is the murder that basically inspired Rob Block to write Psycho. And that's how this whole thing came about. And you can sort of, you can almost see the scene with the writers and the director at this scene high-fiving each other, because what a great idea it is to sort of bring in the story of Psycho, but in the style of an Alfred Hitchcock Presents film. And, you know, I've got nothing against this opening scene, but throughout the film, there's a constant framing device in which Hitchcock is constantly having discussions with this murderer. And it just, it seems very, very clunky, because I don't really see what it's adding to the film, because this is supposed to be the story of how Hitchcock made Psycho. But now, it's sort of... It's drifting from that into a biopic of what this film did to Hitchcock. Because we sort of cut from that scene to the opening of North by Northwest, with Hitchcock coming out of the theatre, being lauded for another great film, and he's starting to look for his next project. And what sort of develops along these two lines is a film that can't quite decide whether what it wants to tell us is the story of how Psycho was made, or 
the story of what Psycho took out of Alfred Hitchcock. Because for a film that's supposed to be about Psycho, Hitchcock spends remarkably little time in his director's chair. You, you see him very, very rarely in that. You see him also very, very rarely actually doing directing. I mean, the one scene that's in all the previews and things is, is where they recreate the shower scene. With poor Janet Lee in the shower getting attacked by Anthony Perkins. And he isn't doing it right. And so you get Alfred Hitchcock grabs the knife and does it himself. Because he knows what terror she wants. But those scenes are too few and far between for a film that's supposed to be about the process of making this film. What the film sort of drifts between is this idea, the idea of Hitchcock coming up against backers who are refusing to support him in this new venture, and in the third strand, which is even stranger, between Hitchcock and his wife Alma, who's sort of having a pseudo-intellectual affair. Um, it never seems to get the balance right between which of these three distinct storylines it wants to be about. So by the end, we've come full circle, and it's back again being about Psycho. But we've now got a real, real problem, because for the last hour and a half, we spent this film watching a man who isn't directing. Because the whole point of Psycho is supposed... What's supposed to be doing this film is saying to us that we should be in cahoots with Hitchcock and Alma against the backers. We should be saying, no, 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 no. With our hindsight, we know that Psycho is going to be an amazing film. You should support it. But the problem is we see nothing in here of the genius of Hitchcock. We don't see anything to explain why his backers should support him with this money. Because he, he, he doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. He's never on set. We never get to see any footage, because obviously the Hitchcock estate wouldn't allow any usage of footage of Psycho. So we, we never ever see what it is he's working on. We never see a finished product. It's just... It seems very, very difficult to do a film about the genius of Alfred Hitchcock and how his backers refuse to help him out and make this amazing film when we never really see any of the genius of Hitchcock. I mean, Anthony Hopkins, he tries his hardest with the part, but I think you sort of watch him play it and he seems to be as confused as the audience as to who exactly he's meant to be. Because if you watch the performance of Toby Jones as Hitchcock in The Girl, now he's got a very, very distinct performance of what he has to do. Because he has to basically be this brutish man who's desperate to get this film sorted out. And he will do at any costs. And the fact is, this girl, Toby Hedren, she's basically rejected him. And he is going to now make her life hell. And we see Hitchcock the brute, Hitchcock the bully. And it's an amazing performance from Toby Jones. But what Anthony Hopkins has to do here is he's not sure how he's meant to play it. Is he meant to play it for laughs? Is it supposed to be played as Toby Jones did, as a brute? Is he supposed to be sort of torturing Janet Lee? Because that never really happens. It seems... Because you sort of watched the girl and you saw the things that Hitchcock was doing to Tippi Hedren. And you could see why she loathed him. And yet, Janet Lee, she, in the shower scene, looks absolutely terrified of Hitchcock. And yet, a few scenes later on, they're just chatting away like it's never happened. And this is the issue you've got with it, because they don't seem to know how to play it. It's sort of stuck in between. And they're just... The performances they're giving, they're, they're okay, but... They don't seem to know where they're going with the performances. The only one that's really given a proper story arc is Helen Mirren as Alma. And the problem is that she is horribly miscast. Because she, A, looks nothing like Alma. Alma was a very, very small woman. And Helen Mirren is 
not a short woman. But we also don't really see what it is that she sees in this wit bloke who she's having the affair with. Is it that he genuinely sees her intellectual prowess? Because certainly we never see Alma getting browbeaten intellectually by Hitchcock. It's just that she doesn't seem to get involved in the film. And the problem is, by the end, these are two people that you really... you don't care about enough to actually want them to succeed. Because what we need in this film is to have the audience completely behind Alma and Hitch and against the directors and censors. We have to have that kind of dynamic so that by the end, when we get the payoff and we see that Psycho originally opens in two cinemas and eventually goes on to become this huge, huge global success thanks to Hitchcock's marketing. But we see none of that. The entire marketing campaign for Psycho is reduced to about two minutes in which he, sort of you see a Hitchcock letter to cinemas telling them how to basically present this film to make sure we can get the best audiences and people queuing round the block. Because that's the point at which you start to see the genius of Alfred Hitchcock at work in this film. But it's too late because that's basically the last few minutes of the film. We just... I think you want more of a payoff to understand who these characters are and you want to root for them. You want to be able to say, yes, you foolish, foolish people. We know from our position in the future that Psycho is going to be great. And it's basically your bureaucracy that's stopping this film from happening. But you don't. You end up with completely the opposite. You end up actually siding with the people who are making the decisions. Because the poor Paramount executive never guessed any footage. Now, if you're having to send a film out there in the big wide world and you aren't getting any footage of it, of course you're going to have reservations. That's, that's just natural. The same way with the censors. Hitchcock is refusing to play ball with them. Of course they're going to refuse to give his film a license. And so you end up as an audience. The one thing you're not meant to be doing in this film is siding against Hitchcock, and yet that's exactly what you end up doing. And it's just a real disappointment, because the film just doesn't seem to know what it wants to do. And it doesn't. there's no real reason why the film exists. So you sort of, like I say, you had a Christmas time. We had the girl, and that was working on the same kind of principles, but that knew what it wanted to do. And OK, I mean, you can feel really, really sorry for Toby Jones in that he's a fantastic actor. And obviously he's now done two major character parts. First of all, his version of Capote. And within a couple of months, you had the Phil Seymour Hoffman version. And then this time he's done Hitchcock. And a month later on, Anthony Hopkins has done it. But I would say this time, unlike Hoffman, I think the performance that Toby Jones gives is going to live longer in memory than that given by Anthony Hopkins, because Hopkins has nothing to work with. Because this film, it's just, it's baggy, it's loose, it's all over the place. Whereas the girl was centred, it was tight. You knew where it was going, you knew exactly what this film was about. The point with Hitchcock is that even halfway through, you're still thinking, what's, the, what's it about? Because most films you can sort of work out from about halfway through, where is that art going to go? What are we going to do with this film? The point with Hitchcock is that when it starts, you have your idea. It's going to go through how was Psycho made. It's going to go through what pressure did that put on Alma and Hitch. And in the end, you're going to show it being the success that it was. Well, it never really gets there because the middle just, it's baggy, it's slow, it's all over the place. And there's too many plot strands that are never really properly developed. The idea, even the one that works probably the best, the one with Alma and the affair, even that ends sort of bizarrely. And, more to the point, there's one scene in which Hitchcock, he collapses in his office. And at the time, Alma and Wit are at a secret beach hideaway, having a writing session. And the phone goes to tell Alma what's happened to Hitch. 
It's never explained how anyone knows, first of all, how she's there, because this apartment is proved to be absolutely secret that no one knows about. And secondly, how did they get the number? And that's never explained. How, how do they do it? And it's just these little annoying things that shouldn't be getting to you in a film like this, because this is, this is a film with some good actors in it. You've got Anthony Hopkins, you've got Helen Mirren, you've got Scarlett Johansson. It's a really good cast, and yet, for most of the film, you're wondering, well, what, what's going on? Where are they going with this? What are we going to be doing? Because is it a film, as the title suggests, about Hitchcock? Or is it a film about Alma? Because there are two strands going off in completely separate directions. One about Hitchcock trying to direct this film, and one about Alma being dissatisfied with their home life. And it's sort of, in the end, they seem to sort of crowbar the two back together by Alma finding out that Wits sleeping with somebody else, and Hitch realising that his film needs Alma to fix it, and they sort of unite and they make Psycho. But by this point, we don't really care anymore because we've had to spend the best part of two hours watching a film that's meandering and going nowhere. And none of the storylines are properly engaging. What they could have done as better would have been to sort of show, as the girl did, the abuse of Hitchcock towards Janet Lee, The abuse of Hitchcock towards Anthony Perkins, who was gay. It's, this is the whole point, is that it doesn't do any of these things. I mean, Anthony Perkins is barely in it. He's in about two scenes. And it's just... Ultimately, I was really, really disappointed with the film. Because I like Hopkins. I, I, I don't mind Mirren. I quite like Scarlett Johansson nowadays. And I like Alfred Hitchcock. I like Psycho. But what I wanted was something like The Girl where I could really compare the two and say, you know, which is the better film? Who does better Hitchcock? And ultimately you can't do that because the girl is just so far ahead of Hitchcock purely because the girl knows what it wants to be. Whereas Hitchcock doesn't. I ended up, in the end, actually thinking Hitchcock and the story arc, there's more of a comparison there to be had, again with the Toby Jones connection, with the Barry and Sound Studio from last year. Because that was also about somebody who's in an awkward position on a set, trying to basically ending up getting sucked in. And again, that would be a better way to go with it. To have had basically Hitchcock getting so obsessed with Janet Lee and Psycho that he abandoned Alma and everything else. But it just doesn't do it, because it can't decide exactly what it wants to be. And I've got a feeling that come the end of the year, when I do my list of films that I've been disappointed in, this one, I think, may well be an early run of the top of that list, which is a shame. But unfortunately, I would say, for the first time this year, don't go and see it. It's not worth your time. I sat through it. For you, it is not that good. And with that, good night. <laughs>